Hello, Steve Woody here from Online Mastery and I wanted to do a quick video today because of something I've seen. Now, I see things a lot and I think that'd be great or I love that and I get ideas and I get inspiration and one of the people that gives me a lot of inspiration is a gentleman called Daniel Priestley. Now, he runs a business called Key Person of Influence. KPI. It's a fantastic, very successful program. I urge you to have a look at it. But one of the reasons I love Daniel so much is because there's a lot of entrepreneurs, there's a lot of people out there who talk a good game. Daniel's one of these people that actually goes out and does it. He, he walks his walk. And this is an example of that. I had an email from one of Daniel's colleagues in the company. His name's Gabrielle. And he sent me an email and at the bottom of the email was this footer and I looked at it and I just thought wow what what a footer it's brilliant it looks great you can click on the get the link for the book you can take the quiz you can buy tickets and you can check all the social media out and I thought this was fantastic so I spoke to Daniel and I asked his permission to make this video because I want to show you how you can create a sexy really cool looking footer like something similar to this and I've done this for myself now for online mastery and it's very simple if you're using a Mac I mean you may be able to use it on other programs I'm gonna specifically show you in this video how to do it using Mac mail so if you're using Outlook or Gmail or anything else there'll be other ways to do it and this may work I'll look into it but for now this is purposely for if you're using a Mac now this just looks like one image but it's not it's actually a lot of different images and it's made up using code so what we first need to do is we need to take the elements that we're going to use so if you have an image that you want to use let's say you want a top section or maybe the bottom section you need to first get that and you need to have that created whether you're having it done through your graphic designer or on a, a website that, that does graphic design but you need to get your footer image whatever it may be and I've done that in Photoshop. I'm just going to show you this now. So as you can see, taking Daniel's model, because I like it, I think it's really good, I've created my own version. And what I've done is I've actually taken across sections. This top section, the next section, the two-day masterclass, and then all the individual social media elements. And what I've done is I've cut these individually. For example, just scroll out. You can see this section. You can now see, if I scroll out again, this section. We then have underneath the different elements and we have the top section. So the reason I've cut it up like this is so that I can add the links. Once you have all of your images, you need to put them into a folder. Now I've done this using a program called Coda. You can use Notepad or anything that you want. And what we first need to do is we need to create the HTML. See, with an email signature like this, you do not want these to be images. If these are images, then some email senders will mark you as spam. Sometimes they won't show up and they can be quite resource heavy. They can take up a lot of space in people's inbox. So to be respectful of that, what we're going to do is upload each individual image to the server or to a web server and we're just going to link to them using HTML. We do that in the following way. We need to create a new div. So you can do you can do this in a text document and all you need to do is just copy and paste what it is that I'm doing. So we're going to create a div and the way that we do that is by saying open bracket div space ID equals and then we need to give it an ID. So this could be footer, contact, you can call this whatever you want to call it. Then what we need to do is make sure we end a div. Another way we can do this is called span. Exactly the same. So we give it a class of its own and we can close it up. The difference between these two is that if I select div, this will then place the image on a line on its own the next line or the next div will be on a new line. If I choose span like I have here for the images below they will appear next to each other. See for example if this Facebook image was wrapped in a div it would appear underneath the link. 
So by placing these in a span, it allows me to place them next to each other. So we first of all need to do that, and depending on what sections you have. So maybe you have your contact information first, so we'll just call this contact. We're then going to copy this and do another one, and this might be an offer that you're promoting. And then this could be website, and this could be Facebook. We can do another one here for Twitter. You get the idea. I'm just going to do this for now for show you. So what we now need to do is, after we have the opening bracket, which is this, so this here is our opening statement, the div, and this is how we close it. So this is a div here, and this is closing the div. We close it with a forward slash, so bracket forward slash div. Span is the same. This is the opening span, and this is the closing span. So what we've now done is we've now created this framework, these blocks, for how our email signature is going to look. Now we need to add the content. So what you will need here is the path, the actual path, to where your images are. So if you've uploaded them, for example here, I have uploaded my images to, and this is an old one, I've changed this, but for example, if I was to use this, I know that my images are in a folder called footer. So what I would now do is I would first create the link, and to do that we open a new bracket, A for anchor, and then we want href equals speech marks. Now we need to type in the exact address, and we do that with http semicolon forward slash forward slash, and then we need to type in whatever it is, our domain name, or whatever the link is that we want to send people to. As this is our contact information, it could be anything. We could use a telephone number here instead. If we don't want to send people to a website at this point, you maybe want people to, um, obviously they've already got your email address because they've emailed you, you may want them to contact you. So we could do. We could turn this link into a telephone. And we put in a telephone number and we do that instead. And we do that with, um, use plus four four, and we put in a phone number. So once we've done that and we've finished that, we then need to close the bracket and then we need to do a forward open bracket, forward slash, and to close the anchor. So the same as what we did with a div, now we have the anchor. So an anchor here opens within the div and then closes. And then we need whatever it's going to be, whatever this um, image is going to be. So we would take our first image and we would, we would put it in and we do that this way. Another bracket, img space src so we're now we're picking the image up and we're picking up from this location equals speech marks again it needs to be the full path http semicolon forward slash forward slash online mastery dot co dot uk forward slash footer because that's the folder where I uploaded them to and I want footer one dot jpeg so that is the exact path as to where my image is. Once I've done this, there's no closing tag here. This is just for the image. We may want to add some additional information. For example, some alt text, which again, we can do alt equals, and we can call it contact. We may also want to specify here the width and the height. You can see I've done that. I'm going to use this section here as an example. All we would do is just add these in. So width equals maybe it's 100 pixels. Height is maybe 50 pixels. If you leave it as standard, then it will just use the, the full width of whatever they are. Once that's done and we've closed the A and we've closed the div, we then have our first section. So that will be the first, if we imagine here, this top section. We then need to put our second section in which will be our offer or whatever it is. You don't have to use this layout. I just think this is a really nice layout. You can use something different. You can customize this as much as you want. I'm just showing you the way that this works. So the next thing we need to do, going back to my program, is we need to put the other, the other areas in. And once they're done and that's finished, we would then end up having a site that looks like this. 
So these are all the different elements. So as we can see, there's a div here for the top section. There's a div here for the Hangout. There's the one there for my master class. I've got my site, which is now a span. Remember, because this is a span. And then all of my individual um, images. And when I took these images, what I did is I took the left hand uh, divide here. You can CSS or you can add these in uh, using custom style, but you, I've, I've just done it in a simple image with a left block and the image. So left block and image all the way along. And these are all here, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, so and so. Once you have all that information, you need to copy it. Okay, and you need to keep that safe. We're now going to go back to our email and we're going to go up to preferences. Here in the signature, we need to create a new signature. So come across the signature, we need to add new and we need to create a signature. Okay, once we've created that signature, we can just put some blank test in there, a blank text, whatever it may be. Okay, once we've done that, we need to close this down. Now, this is very important. This is how you embed HTML into your Mac, into your Mac mail. Okay, the first thing we need to do is open up Finder. So we open up our Finder. And from here, we need to choose from the top menu, Go. Once we're on Go, or once we're hovering over Go at the top, if we hold down Alt on a Mac, you can see it opens up what's called library. We click on library and this opens up the library for our Mac and we need to navigate to mail. Within mail we need to navigate to v2 and then we need to come across to mailboxes and then we need to come across to mail data and then we need to come across to signatures. Okay, so just to do that again so that you can see that. In library, mail, v2, mail data, signatures. Now we can see our signatures. This is a signature that I've already done. This is the new one. If you've only got one, then it'll appear there. You can tell because it has at the very bottom dot mail signature. And you'll need to open this in a text editor. Now I'm going to open this when I select other right click select other I'm going to open it in coder 2 because that's the program I'm using you can use TextMate or anything like that this will then open up and we now have this information here is the same information that we had when we went to mail preferences this is this information in here so what we're now doing is we're customizing this and what we need to do is we need to take all the information in the body okay so we have the body here and we can put this onto a new line for a moment just so that we can see and inside we have we can see our div and we have our test okay that's this what we're going to do is replace that with our content so we have our content here okay once we've done that we can just close up these lines back to how they work we can now save this document okay so we'll save the document now before we do anything else, it's very important that before we do anything else, we go back to Finder. We come back to this document that we've just updated and we right click. Okay, We go to More Info or Get Info and we must lock. So you must select lock. You'll see that this puts a little padlock on the image here. You must do this. If you don't do this, then when you open up your Mac program, your mail program, it will revert back to how it was. So we must lock the document. Okay? Document stays locked. We close it down. Now here's one that I made earlier. This is the one that we're going to use. We will then close down our email program. So I'm going to quit. And then when we reopen, I'm going to create a new email. So I'll file new message and from here if I go to signature I'm going to use the signature that I created so just to show you this if I went to mail preferences signatures we can see here I'm not worried about signature 2 we can delete that now for the purpose of this but for the one that I created I have this signature 
it's a signature that I'm using. So you just drag it from here across, close that down, and it allows me to select it. So now I can type in my message. Once I've finished, I select my signature, and it's as simple as that. When I send that to myself now, all these links will be clickable, and they will click through to where we need them to be. So again, just coming back to the coder section, we have the href, this is the link where we want the picture to go to. We have the image, this, is, and it, this has to be the full URL. For example, this one here will not work, it has to be the http forward slash forward slash and then it will be onlinemastery.co.uk forward slash footer forward slash footer one dot jpeg. Has to be the full URL, but by doing that as you can see here we have a really nice custom footer with click-through links just to give you that little bit more exposure.